So now let's look at what happens with an ovoid shape, which would be sort of like a ball, sort of like an egg. Okay. Um, we're going to look at this styrofoam hat model over here. So we have the same kind of lighting, three-quarter lighting. So that creates a bright top and especially a very bright circle of light, just um, almost in the center of this head and a little left, the highlight. And then there's also a shadow area, which is on the side of the ovoid away from the light source. So in order to represent this, I'm going to actually work first with my eraser. And I'm going to erase a kind of ovoid shape. It's very difficult to make these shapes accurately without moving your arm around a lot. Get a rhythm going, it's a lot easier. And I'm going to go both ways. I find that that counteracts the fact that my muscles are a little stronger going one way and a little weaker going the other. And then I'm going to concentrate here on the brightest area that I see. I'm going to erase a little harder with more pressure and keep the eraser in the same spot for a while. Now I'm going to move the eraser a little bit more, make a bigger erased area. So spiraling out with the eraser. And pushing less as I get a little further away to start to create that highlight. Now I might work on it a bit with the soft eraser. I'm going to clean it first and pull it until it feels nice and soft and pliable. So now I'm going to push harder. And as I spiral out, I'm going to apply less pressure so that I get a soft effect around the edges of my highlight, which matches what we see. The curve is a continuous curve. So as the light spreads out, there's no um, sharp differentiation. We can't point to one spot maybe where the, the, the brightness ends. Because it doesn't really end. It diffuses. Okay. I'm going to come up here. I also think the top of my ovoid needs to be a little brighter. I'm going to continue with this sort of circular motion because of the curved surface that I'm trying to draw. And I think that some of the light spills down on this part of the curve. And then there's also, um, below the ovoid shape, a cylindrical shape. It's also a continuous curve. There's a highlight, a very bright area, roughly here under the brightest highlight on the ovoid. There's the brightest highlight on the cylinder. And then as we move away from the brightest area, we have a soft diffusion of light. So again, we don't have one um, place we could point to where the light is suddenly different. Instead, we have this spread of light so it gradually gets softer as we move away from the brightest highlight. Now I'm going to look at the shadow areas. So the darkest area it seems to me to be over here. And if you think of this as a three-dimensional shape that comes out, this is where the shape comes closest to us. So light has to travel in a straight line. Light can go past this point, right? but it can't bend around and hit anything over here. So we get the shadow. Okay. The shadow's kind of darkest, right past that point where the light leaves it. Right? Remember, the light has to go straight. Light can't bend around. Right? So that's why this darkest area is right here. So we're going to put some this dark in. And I'm going to take my fingers this time, and I'm going to 
spread the charcoal so that I get a soft transition. Yeah. While I do this, I often think that um, what would it be like if I had my fingers on the ovoid over there? That makes sense to me to spread the charcoal over a curved surface. There's also a little bit of a shadow down here, away from the light. And a bit over here on the nail, the cylinder of the neck has a bit of shadow down here. Also a little bit here. Now I'm going to look at what's around and under this ovoid and cylindrical neck. So if I look at the background behind this hat model, everything seems quite bright. So I think I need to brighten up the background. So I'm going to make the edge between the hat model head and the background by creating a, two different values, the bright background and the dark gray of the hat model. Now I need to clean my eraser. I'm going to check my proportions at this point. So I have a ovoid shape that's this wide. And the height of it, as you can see, is more than the width. Right? It's kind of the width plus about half of the width to get me from here to here. So let me now check the actual head. I'm going to hold it between my fingers. There's a width. And it's a bit more square than I've drawn it. So I need to change my concept a bit. I'm going to bring the top of it down a bit. I think I'll also make it um, so that the highlight comes up so that the cylinder is a little taller. So that's a bit better proportions. So I'll have to change the shadow a little bit up here. Okay, so let's do a little bit more of the background. Look at the background under the head and behind the head. 
So there is a shadow that the head's casting on the table, but a lot of the table's pretty bright. In fact, I see an area um, over here. It's quite bright. And then there's a shadow that's being cast by the head off this way. And then I see another area that's quite bright over here. I get the curve underneath the head. Make sure you look at that carefully. See that it's not a straight horizontal. Instead, there's a curve here. We're not seeing the flat bottom of this cylinder. We're seeing instead the curved side. And so now I could look at um, the basic shapes and start refining them. There's a bit more light here, for example. I'd like this to look a bit brighter. I'd like to adjust the shape of the shadow here. I'd like to put a bit of the dark, very dark shadow under the head here. Um, some of these shadow areas will have to be adjusted. I may want to put in the edge of the table surface. Now if we look at um, the pattern of light and shadow again, right, and think back to the box, right, we can see that the light is shining on this area, right, spreading. Right, Three-quarter light coming down from above. And then all the areas where the light is blocked have a shadow. Right. So we're going to take a look at some areas of the skeleton now and see how this might apply to the skeleton, these same 